unique football Friday night due to Hurricane Matthew. Just a few games in the area tonight. We start in Warren County hosting new region opponent Aquinas. Warren's Jarvis Collins takes it upfield. Nice run with the stiff arm before getting knocked out of bounds. But it's a Warren County first down. Then Collins again forces his way into the end zone to get his team on the board. Warren County up 6-0 on Aquinas. Then Aquinas coming back. John Lambert passing downfield to Joseph Douglas going to the far sideline and breaking a tackle and picking up some difficult yards. And he picks up a first down. Then Lambert running the ball upfield himself, gets the blocking he needs, and he's in for an Aquinas touchdown. Aquinas goes on to win 20 to 12 over Warren County. You are watching Football Friday Night. Football Friday Night is powered by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Nissan, innovation that excites. Georgia Bank and Trust and Southern Bank and Trust, doing the right thing. Augusta Technical College, smart people, smart choices. Great deals on furniture. The deals are here, the deals are now. Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price, every day. Your CSRA Chevy dealers, Chevrolet, find new roads, and Johnston's Georgia Campus Services, celebrating moments that matter since 1897. Now, the leader in local high school football coverage, WJBF Sports brings you Football Friday Night. Welcome into week eight of Football Friday Night. I am Nathan Palm going solo tonight without my partner Matt Zahn who has left us and taken a job in Chicago. I'm certainly going to miss him and wish him all the best. So for now, you're just going to have to put up with me. All right, going back to football, Hurricane Matthew led to the postponement of games on the South Carolina side this week and most Georgia teams played last night, but a few local teams were in action tonight. So let's go to Lincolnton. For a 1A region matchup, the Red Devils are 1-0 hosting Hancock Central tonight. First quarter, they were up 7-0. Quay Hartfield to Medarius Roberts take its 15 yards for the first down. Then it's Reed, their quarterback, to Tidarius Elam, and he dives in for the touchdown. 13-0 Lincoln County. They were rolling early in this one. Javon Reed then again to Quay Hartfield who takes it down to the 25-yard line, tack on a 15-yard penalty for the late hit. And then after that, the handoff, Javon Reed takes it into the end zone himself, and Lincoln County wins 34-20 over Hancock Central. Going west on Highway 378, Washington Wilkes hosting Greene County. Wilkes, Quintavian Colors, hands off to Quindacious Hogan, who bolts up the middle for a 28-yard run before he's knocked out near the goal line. Two plays later, it's Quintavian Cullers who fights on the quarterback keeper for what is a Wilkes touchdown. They take a 26-20 lead and, lead and Washington Wilkes wins 35-21 to for their first win of the season. On to some of the games from Thursday night. Greenbrier off to its hottest start since 1997, but it has to prove itself in region play starting last night at Lakeside. Congrats to Lori Materna, Lakeside's homecoming queen. Third quarter, Panthers up 7-0, and this was the story of the night. Nowhere to run for Greenbrier, but Sean Barnes with the stop. Lakeside D pitching a shutout, and things are about to go from bad to worse for the pack. Late in the third off the muff punt, Antonio Leverett jumps on it for the Panthers, and it doesn't take long for the official to signal first and 10 Lakeside. The Panthers would go backwards, as both offenses spent a lot of time doing last night. They reach for a long field goal, but it's blocked by Rashad Nixon of Greenbrier. Tyler Mullins will recover, but the Wolfpack can do anything with it, and the celebration was certainly on Blue Ridge Drive last night. Lakeside picks up its first win of the season by handing Greenbrier its first loss of the season, 7-0. A good matchup in Waynesboro last night in the Bear Den, Burke County. Hoping to have a barbecue as they host the Razorbacks of Cross Creek. The Bears opening its region play. Razorbacks won their region opener last week at Hefseba. First quarter, Cross Creek leading Burke 6-0, but Jalen Odom takes the handoff around the right side, and he's down to the five-yard line for Burke County. Two plays later, Odom takes it in for the score, and we're tied at six down in Waynesboro. Back come the Razorbacks, though. Devon Hicks. Looking downfield for number nine, Kenyatta Brown. And he hauls in a great grab over the defender. But then 
back come the Bears. It's Odom again, this time catching a pass out of the backfield. And he drives down to the three yard line and takes a lick out of bounds. Burke would punch it in from there as they win 55 to 12 over Cross Creek. Sticking with 4A Region 3 last night, Thompson Bulldogs still undefeated, kicking off region play at Hefs of a third quarter. Thompson leading 58 to nothing when number 15, Tory Taylor. Rumbles into the end zone, and that makes it 64 0 over Hefseba. It was all Thompson last night. Tyler Curry all over the Rebel defense, and uh, Thompson would go on to beat Hefseba 7 to nothing in that region game. Two more teams in 4A Region 3 beginning last night. ARC hosting Baldwin out of Northeast Georgia. That's Baldwin's running back, Malik Kelsey. He's moved out of bounds. This was a very low scoring game. ARC's Clyde White with a strong run to the right side. And that's pretty much all we had for highlights as ARC falls to Baldwin 7 0 on Thursday night. Red Hot, Jefferson County, ranked third in the state for 2A teams, looking to stand defeated against region opponent Harlem in the second quarter. Jeffco up 14 7. That's Nikel Stone along the far sideline. He cuts it back upfield for a 37-yard pickup. Then Jenkins keeps the ball hit himself this time for the touchdown, and Jefferson County takes a 21-7 lead over Harlem. Still in the second quarter, handoff Jaron McKenney for Jeff Coe. He's been fantastic this season. He gets inside the five. McKenney finishes what he started, walks into the end zone, two-point conversion good. Jeff Coe up big, 29-7. Harlem was punting here. It's a muffed punt and they would fall on it, and they're not able to advance the ball from there, so they would set up for a 35-yard field goal, which they would make, but Jefferson County all over Harlem last night, 49-10. to All right, down in Jenkins County, Eagles are 3-2. and two. They dropped their region opener last week, playing another region opponent, Johnson County, last night. Tykeese Green pitching into the backfield to Ty J. Lee. He takes it to the far sideline. And he's beaten the defense 35 yards for the score, 8 0 Jenkins County. Then Johnson County, Johnson County answering back with a handoff. Rand Norris around the far sideline, and he's in for the score. So we're all tied up at eight apiece. And then Johnson County would take over. Jalen Johnson is getting the 18 yard reception here. And they went up a couple scores on Jenkins County, but they would come back. And Jenkins County wins an overtime game 36 to 30 over Johnson County. Well, we've still got much more to get to on this edition of Football Friday Night, including last night's rivalry between Augusta Independent Programs, Augusta Prep, and Westminster. There were some ridiculous highlights, including this one that you don't want to miss. That's next on Football Friday Night. Supporting high school athletics, McDonald's, proud sponsor of football Friday night.